You are listening to the regular version of Sexy Marriage Radio, smrnation.com. You've turned on Sexy Marriage Radio, where the best sex happens in the marriage bed. Here's your host, Dr. Corey Allen. This only seems appropriate to start it this way. OMG, you've done it again. I just finished listening to 502, and I will want to hear it again. My goodness, it's so full of great stuff. I wasn't even halfway through, and I hit pause to share this episode with my husband, my two grown sons, and our youngest's girlfriend. I'm putting myself in a precarious position in doing so, but I so wish that I would have had this information when I was younger, and my 90-year-old self would not be happy if I didn't share this treasure. (laughs) What they do with it is on them, but I will continue to share until I can't. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that's perfect. No regrets, right? We don't want to get to the end of life and say, I wish I would have shared X, Y, Z with whoever. And then let's even steer it towards the relationship. I wish I would have brought up X, Y, Z or Uh attempted or said or... Whatever the topic is, yeah. Absolutely, because marriage is where we can't hide. Mm-hmm. And in family, we can't hide. No matter we like how much we like to think we can, uh. <laughs> we can't hide. And we are so glad that you chose not to hide with us because mm-hmm. this is Sexy Marriage Radio where we want to go where you want to go. And the way you can do so is let us know. 214-702-9565 is our voicemail line. You can call there, get get to the front of the line, or you can email us at feedback at sexymarriageradio.com. And if you like what we've got going on, we ask you to rate and review it. By the way, episodes are now back on YouTube. Um, we've are got they? The, we've got the audio okay. going no, onto no YouTube. Video, no, video, no video, just audio. Uh, but the audio shows are now uh, happening back onto YouTube. So if that's a place you frequent or you want to have stuff in the background, you're welcome to join us there. But if you like what we got going on, please comment and review. So I'm curious, how does that work? Extended versus... It's just the regular sure, version. It's just the regular version. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of... Coming up on today's regular free version of Sexy Marriage Radio is several of your questions and our answers. We're going to attempt to go through more than we've tried before. All I'm hearing is Star Trek. <laughs> uh, to go that, where no, go, well, no, where I no can't man even, has gone before. Thank you. I can't even spit it out. <laughs> well, sometimes sexual encounters are that way, too. Yes, I'm attempting right. to go where no man, no man has, has gone, gone before. before. And on the extended version of Sexy Marriage Radio, which is deeper, longer, and there are no ads, you can subscribe at smrnation.com forward slash smracademy. We're going to maybe, just maybe, wrap up this intimacy conversations that we've been having of... Okay. The new definition of intimacy and coming at it from a slightly different way was part two. And now we want to start spinning it towards some actionable a framework of now what do I do with this? All right. How do I approach this all the more? Okay. All that's coming up on today's show. Hey, thanks. I did have a couple of questions. First one is what if your wife doesn't like your personality? How do you work through that? Um, it's been a sore subject. Another question I have is how do you determine if you're a sex addict versus a high drive? Um, I've been told that because I listen to your show and other shows, that makes me a sex addict. And then the third question is just with COVID and a bunch of people I know who've done Pure Desire or the Conquer series, a Christian uh perspective of how to deal with pornography has gone through relapse and then with the stress of COVID I was just kind of curious if you've heard of that or more couples are struggling with that because it also looks like divorces are going up on the rise too so just a couple of different questions thanks for all you're doing always enjoy the show take care so let's just take them in order okay what do you do when your spouse does not like your personality You're asking me? <laughs> well, that was kind of who I was looking at while we yeah. were talking, but I'll answer it. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm going to defer to you and, and chime in where I can, but what what would you say would be the answer on that? Well, okay, so there's two things, and I'm going to put the two together, uh, high desire or addiction and personality. 
they're different context in, in subject matters, obviously, but the fundamentals are the same. If I don't like your personality and I can use that as a broad brush statement and I don't have to give what's the technicalities and what's the nuance, what's the specifics within that, that's what I got to know. So is that an out? Is that a way for someone to just say, I mean, well, for them to have connected in the first place, there had to be something in the personality that she exactly. liked. There so, was something. So what turned, granted, we all, you know, we, we say that, um, you know, you're really into marriage when you wake up one morning and say, who is this in bed next to me? Right. Right. We, we've said that a, a few times before. So we realize that once you get into a relationship, you see all these things you didn't see before. Oh well, yeah, but there's got to be something there. You get you get behind the curtain and you see things. That's what we've been doing in the last two weeks of extended content is is when more stuff is revealed. But I'm also adding in the second question he had on that because she made he made the comment of I've been told that because I listen to these things I'm a sex addict. That's a broad brush stroke of just saying you've got a problem because you're interested in this con in this content in this aspect. Just like I don't like you because of your personality. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's not specific enough. No. And so if I hear from anybody, or if you ever told me, you know what, honey, I don't like your personality. I said, okay, I need some specifics. Yeah, what is it you don't give like? Me some, give me some detail. Right. Do you not like the way I eat an apple? Is it right. that I right. smack my food? Right. Or Maybe I laugh it... loud and it's inappropriate. Or... or am I just mean? Or or I got all kinds of noises and smells emanating from my body. And, uh, you know, I Maybe know I'm all always sarcastic <laughs> and I don't like <laughs> so, someone who's sarcastic. Right. So you need some specifics. And okay. then when you start getting that, then you can talk about, okay, wait, what's really changed? And what's really that about? What's the meaning of it? Okay. Same context with high desire or addiction. Because those two suckers can get easily labeled, higher desire can easily be labeled as an addict by the lower desire. Sure. Right? And so addiction, I personally and professionally do not like the whole concept of addiction when it comes to, especially sex addiction. Yes, it can happen because the chemicals in your brain when you're talking about the, the fire off with orgasm. That is an addictive component that can happen, and it can be tied to other things. You're not saying there aren't things that are addictive. Totally. I'm not saying that. You, are you saying that there are way too many times that people throw around the word addiction Yes. when that's not what it is? Right. Okay, that's right. your concern there. But yeah, yep. so, so what I want to know is, okay, what are the behaviors that are manifesting because of this that are the fallout of the higher desire or addiction. Yeah. Because if it is an addiction, then you have some self-destructive things going on. Forget the consequences, forget the collateral damage. You know, you're still going to great lengths to satisfy right. whatever. And that can cause all kinds of, of damage and, and struggle. Mm-hmm. But if it's just higher desire, because you're interested in this more, Sexy Marriage Radio wouldn't be around if we didn't have higher desires. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I'm thinking of the comparison here uh, for someone who wants to get their finances in order and might be the higher desire in that. Are they an addict because they listen to Dave Ramsey? Right. Mm. Am, am I an addict so because I'm educating at, at myself? At the risk of throwing you completely under the bus, babe, I think you might be addicted to Excel spreadsheets. Well, I love listening to Dave Ramsey, I'm just saying, so maybe I'm an addict. But I, I gotcha. I'm just saying that just because yep. someone has a higher desire for anything, if you're educating yourself more, that does not define... Right. So if you're going to use that kind that. of terminology, if you as the person themselves determine, you know what, maybe I am addicted to this. Now, all of a sudden, you're in, the, you're in the process of being able to confront it better because first you have to recognize you have a problem. Well, and... and but sure. I'm hearing this as it was labeled by somebody else. Right. We're just hearing his question, right? right? And so it is valid that anytime uh, I'm in a situation with a spouse and they bring something up and say something... For me, I would want to at least analyze it and say, okay, is any of this reality? I need to take a hard core look at myself. What percentage of this is true? What percentage is true? What's not? Yep. And when I'm comfortable with where I am, mm-hmm. it, yes or no, then I need to take it from there. I like that. Okay. And then speaking of addiction and where I can easily steer is the whole world of pornography, which was his third point. 
mm-hmm. of have I heard or come across with COVID and those people that are on the the journey, like myself, of it's been a part of their life. Does it still, is it still a part of their life? Have they relapsed? Are there still struggles? Well, what I do know is some of the latest statistics that have come out is the pornography industry has boomed with COVID. Yeah. That their last I saw it was up by 75%. Like sales? Just volume. Or clicks or whatever. Volume, traffic and sales all all across the board is what is the data I saw. So is it causing more of an issue with people? Yes. Uh, is that what's directly resulting in more marriages dissolving in divorce? That might, it probably is a correlation and a factor, but it's not going to be linear in my mind. Because yeah. even just the fact that, you know, I've been holed up with somebody that I'm just recognizing more and more I don't get along with, I don't really like. And right. And so there's this element of, no, I'm out. And that's the line, final straw. Because before pandemic, I was able to keep myself distracted enough from you, mm-hmm. possibly. And so there mm-hmm. wasn't that much of an issue and it could be level enough that, it works. So, well, I think all these things that he's saying kind of point to what that statistic is. You yeah. know, all of a sudden, I just, just don't magnify. Like, I just don't like your personality. Good point. I mean, yeah, good point. Yeah, just magnified what's already in existence. Right. And sometimes it's just recognizing, okay, so how, what do I need to do in this current situation to confront my role? What's my responsibility? And what of what, like you just pointed out, the meaning, the middle conversation we just had what percentage of what they hear what they're saying about me is true because there probably is maybe it's three percent maybe it's only one percent but there's still some truth in there maybe, maybe it's 90 percent. if know. i can have some courage to exa- examine that mm-hmm. i'm in a better place and then they maybe then that turns my marriage into a better place it makes me better i know that an email from the inbox pam so my husband and i've been married for two years now we're both happy with our sex life i love newlyweds relatively into marriage right and the sex world joining us at the SMR Nation. Um, Your show's helped so much, so thank you. We were both virgins on our wedding night. I feel interested in trying new things sexually, but I'm not sure where to start. I've never watched pornography, don't even really watch sex scenes in movies. My husband watched pornography as a teen, but was miraculously set free from that addiction when he became a Christian, which was super cool. But obviously, he doesn't want to talk about or plan our sex life around pornography. I hear vague allusions to try pe- to things that people may try, challenging themselves, etc., but I feel a bit in the dark. My husband is very easily pleased and willing to try the other things, but he isn't overflowing with fantasies or other ideas either. Can you suggest some things to try to mix things up or a resource we could find use to find ideas beyond simple things like changing locations? Thanks so much. So there's a couple that come right off the bat to me mm-hmm. on this one. One, if you want to get on the internet, uh, there is a website out there called Christian Family Christian Friendly Sex Positions dot com. And if that's not exactly it, just put that in Google, and it'll come right up. And these are all just drawings of like you would see the uh, bathroom signs, the the outline of the body, so you can tell it's a male or a female. Mm-hmm. So it's not anything that's provocative other than the fact that it's suggestive because it's showing it has 230 different positions. That's amazing. That it shows. (laughs) And you could try keeping in mind. um, This is one of the statistics I've kind of landed on that I think rings true. We'll see 230 different options and ways we could go about doing this thing. And not all of them are just intercourse because this also is including oral, you know, sure. there's a variety sure. of, of contexts of sex and our sexuality. But keep in mind that maybe about 30% of what you try, you're actually going to be successful at. Because some of the stuff's like, yeah, we just can't do that. My yeah. body doesn't bend that way. Uh, you know, it, Just didn't do it for me, maybe. Yeah, or sometimes we're just not capable of, okay. especially those of us that are old, like me, because you not are, not are not old, but I am. Right. And so I'll, okay. I'll throw a hip out. <laughs> if I try some of those suckers. <laughs> so, so that's one. It's just Christian Friendly Sex Positions is a great resource. Okay. Um, another is an old friend of ours, Intimately Us mm-hmm. app. Um, yep. He's got great games and some things that are going that we helped create and mm-hmm. uh, we're part of. And then he's just kind of run, he's on his own with this now and doing some fantastic stuff with it. 
that that's safe. Uh, a game you and I have really loved is uh, a private affair. But sadly, trying to find that deck of cards because it's a print, you know, and shipped to you, they're out of inventory and they have not done another run. So it's a collector's item. Right. Um, but we're trying to work out a way to get that out there again yes. <laughs> behind the scenes. Yes. Uh, just Definitely. because it's such a great way to frame conversations and spark some dialogue. Because just as a little caveat uh, to the people that are two years into this thing, um, there's only so many things bodies can do, right? There's, there's only so many orifices that we have and appendages that we have in ways that we can touch or be touched or whatever. Okay. Right? Okay. But there is limitless ways that you can experience this act with, with your spouse, yeah. with your presence. And if you think beyond the realms of what do we do and get into how am I in this? Who am I in this? Who am I with in this? This is where married sex as a long game becomes really good because then you start to realize, I mean, we're 27 and a half years into this thing, mm -hmm. coming up on 28 mm -hmm. this year. And in some ways we haven't scratched the surface. Yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> because yeah. we are becoming who we're becoming as this journey's unfolding mm -hmm. too. And so there's newness mm -hmm. all the way through. And so... Yes, it's fun to find ways to, to spice it up, change it up, and have some fun with this. Absolutely. Add some variety and some novelty. That's a great thing. But don't discount the fact of who's doing this. Yeah. Well, I think the beauty and the things you brought up here, some, you know, one of them is talking about positions. The app has, you name it, little games and novelty and thing like, mm -hmm. things like that. The things like... Um, and. And we, you know what, we may even have an extra box with some extra cards of the private affair that I will, I will mail this lady if she, um, will send us her okay. address. Cause I think we have some extra cards. I'll send her some samples of it. Cause that to me was a fun, that got my mind there in you it. Go. It was not just about the body. That was more. I, I about love where you're going with this. The pain. mind and intriguing and, and getting my mind past where I was before. There are things that I will. Um, happily talk about with you now that before actually that game got me past it, mm -hmm. right? And and of course the show I'm sure helps with a lot of people. Um, I think it's a little different for me being your wife and listening to you talk about it, right? <laughs> <A little bit. laughs> but you've helped me a ton on that too. But bit. the mind, the mm -hmm. mind over matter, right? I love some of the things like like we've done with our bedroom like led lights on the headboard that's kind of behind and gives this glow in the room and setting the ambiance in the room that can add a lot of spice as well mm -hmm. um maybe your only wardrobe is some long necklaces some different things like right. that uh, different have, yeah, different things like this. that spice it up so and some the other like, thing to do like to spice it uh if you want to spice it up come to the sexy marriage radio getaway in june mm, yeah come join us june 17th through the 20th registration's going on right now Mm -hmm. uh, come join us and you'll hear a lot and get to experience a lot in the sense of what you'll be exposed to and what, what how I'll challenge you mm -hmm. in the way I'm thinking this is going to unfold that maybe that can help add a little bit of a spice to it too. But I don't think we need to give you a ton of resources because there's some that can really get you off in the right direction. Yeah. So go have fun. Send us an email feedback at sexy .com If this was your email, I'll also try to email you behind the scenes too. Just get your address and we'll send you some cards. So another email, Pam, so it says, Hey, Dr. Corey, I was excited to find your podcast. It's refreshing to hear honesty when it comes to the Christian marriage bed. My husband and I have been married for almost 27 years. Congratulations. Mainly they're good years, which I love that, <laughs> the honesty of that statement. We have good conversations about sex and usually a pretty steamy sex life. Here's my issue. Recently, my husband has introduced a couple of sex toys, which has been fun, but he seems to be relying on those instead of putting any effort into helping me achieve an orgasm. Also, during sex, he's become quite selfish, expecting me to do more of the quote-unquote work. When he's done, I can take care of myself, quote-unquote. Please don't think that I, can keep a that I keep a scorecard of who does what. I certainly don't, but oral sex can go both ways. When I bring this up, he's quick to apologize, but the actions don't seem to change. Do you have any advice for me? Thanks so much for your time and your podcast. 
Okay. Well, it's interesting because toys are another way to space it up for the last caller. Mm-hmm. But they are. But uh, they because it can make the route and the goal more reliable and easy, which is what she's describing. Exactly. So because as the way Dr. Lori Mintz puts it, clitorises and vibrations go well together. Yes. So um, I love this question though because mm-hmm. it does become. I think it falls on everybody's shoulders to recognize what am I seeking with this experience? Right. What am I, am I, is, is I, right. am, so maybe because what she's tried to do is the way I'm hearing her, her email, tell me if I'm wrong with this one, Pam, but she's tried, she's recognizing the problem and she's jumping to possible solutions that aren't in her circle. She brings it up to him of what I need you to be doing. Oh, not in her side, not in her circle because she can't control it. Right. Is that what you're because saying? Because he, yep. he apologizes. He recognizes it too, but then there's no follow up with it. Uh huh. Or he quickly follows, you know, the follow through stops. Right. So maybe the conversation needs to start to shift towards okay, what's our goal? Is it really just to achieve orgasm each time? I go, mm-hmm. you go, that's it. Because maybe she's not on board with that goal and he is, and that needs to be aired. That's what's mm-hmm. present then. Right? Sure. That's the dynamic that that's getting in the way. Right. But then there's also an element of when you're recognizing this can go both ways, and I feel like he's taking the easy way out or leaving it more to me and a device rather than his involvement. Have you tried communicating? It's not just the goal I'm after. It's the experience with you. It's the connection with you I want. Well, that's her goal. The, it, it's not just the orgasm I'm after. I think I want to... That's what, she, that's what you're I'm, hearing. Okay. Right. You, you said it's not the goal I'm after. Well, what is her goal? If his is orgasm, if hers is connection, then one of them's not achieving. One's at the expense of the other, most likely. Yeah, and and if if I'm only doing one or the other, then you're just creating a bigger divide, mm-hmm. and it makes sex a divisive thing in your marriage rather than something that's going to bring you together. Right, and so the thoughts would be, you've had the conversation about it, and I'd love a few more details about what was conver- what was communicated mm-hmm. and how it was specifically talked about, because mm-hmm. sometimes there's this element of, I say it, but it's a little lacking in a in a weight of how I'm saying it even, mm-hmm. right? It's like a poor me. And I'm not saying that that's what's going on, but that's, we can do this. Yeah, right. We can, we can pitch our little fit. Yeah. Right? We're all capable. The worst of us and all, always capable of this. So how do you figure out what you're trying to communicate has the weight behind you to be able to say, look, the next time this happens... And, and you're done, and then it's the time that I get to, you get to focus, and we focus on me. Uh, no electronic allowed. This is just you, buddy. That's what I want. Mm-hmm. And you just see. Right. Because that might mean that ends the, the encounter for a little while, and that might mean end multiple encounters for a little while. Mm-hmm. Because if he's like, I'm not really on board, now you have more data to really address, okay. The way she titled the way she titled her email was "lazy lover," oh, but then that changes that's huge. it. But then that changes the connotation to "selfish lover." Hmm. He just wants what he wants. Yeah, and he's not giving, and he's not gracious. That's a different connotation. Totally. And so now, all of a sudden, I see everything that we face in life, and this is where we're heading in the extended content uh, to a degree too today. Everything we face that's marital with intimacy and depth and connection involved. Really, the only thing I can do is clarify what is my next best step. And then I have to see what happens from that to then take my next one. We often think I can one fail swoop. I've said it, so you should do it. <laughs> right? I've, I've told you this is an issue. So why aren't you still doing it? Mm-hmm. And then we start to shift into this, well, I'm focusing on what's missing rather than what's present. And what's present in that regard is he doesn't care about your orgasm anymore. Mm-hmm. So how do you face that? That's the better question. Yeah. And you got to be willing to follow through on 
you know, if you're not, well, okay. Well, I'm trying to remember your phraseology when you're talking about it, but this, whatever you bring to the table may mean that you don't have it for a while. Right. right? Well, I, cause that's, I hear what you're saying because this is where my mind went to. It's almost being willing as the wife to be able to say, look, thank you for the introduction of a quicker and easy, more reliable way for me to achieve an orgasm. I still want you to be a part of this. In fact, I would prefer you being part of this. And if you're not willing, then I don't even need you because I've got this. And mm. so I won't even be around for you possibly either. So you're on your own too, buddy. And it's just kind of a, it's calling out what's going on mm-hmm. of thank me. Thank you for showing me <laughs> this, this new avenue, but it's at the expense of us and I don't want that. And so then you have to be willing to follow through with that of, okay, so if that means he's quick to recognize it but not follow through, then you need more data to be able to call that out. And usually that's by your moves too. Mm. Well, we did it, babe. Actually made it through a lot of questions. We did. <laughs> that was a lot of data. <laughs> that was. And... It is fun because I think some of the times where we've gone throughout the history of SMR, um, we go deep on some of the different questions, add in some different content or Mm -hmm. concepts, try to see. And then sometimes maybe we just need to answer the questions. Yeah. And don't need all the fluff and theory. I don't think it's fluff. (laughs) but um, I was trying to be self-deprecating there. Okay. Well, (laughs) don't do that. Okay. Well, this has been Sexy Marriage Radio. Uh, If we've left something undone or you wanted more fluff and theory and data, let us know. We can easily pick this back up and continue the conversation. 214-702-9565 or feedback at sexymarriageradio.com. So wherever you are, whatever you've been doing, we thank you each and every week that you spend a little bit of time with us. See you next time.